I felt like there's a lot more pressure as a challenger team trying to play. Basically, you'd be changing your lifestyle to be doing this if you got in, and then you're going into a foreign neighborhood, basically. As an LCS team, this is a place we come to every weekend. This is a very comfortable home for us. We know how to practice here, and we're not traveling at all to get to this event, so it's going to be really nice for us. Welcome back to the 2015 Spring Promotion Tournament. Complexity is battling to keep their LCS spot against Team 8 in this best of five match, but Team 8 leads it 1-0. And my goodness, Slushy was a monster in that last game. Yeah, he had the double-double, 10, 1, and 11. The binary double-double. As better. well as an 88% kill participation. So he had was involved in 21 of the 24 overall kills. And what did that mean for Team 8? It mean they control every Dragon, every Baron. Once Kali Trolls went in, Slushy's ball was just always on top of him, ready to blow up whoever he got on top of. And just a great one-two combo coming out of Team 8 in the first game. Yeah, it's definitely true. And every one of those ultimates he held onto as well. He had the Shockwave ready for when he needed it most and didn't just throw it out when he thought he'd be able to get a kill. They got that one pick on Bubbadub because he knew that that was what he was going to be able to use it for. They'd be able to transition that away from all of this pressure that they were taking in the mid lane, and it really alleviated a lot for those guys. Yeah, and he used it in a way that controlled team fights as well. It was moving the priority targets away. It was getting on top of that Syndra as we yeah. do jump into Champion Select. Look for that to be one of the bands that needs to be taken off the board, I believe, because if you get Kali Trolls on a strong initiator, Orianna is just such a good pick. And we do have Aurelia, Nidalee, Syndra and Alistair being taken off the board here. Complexity don't want to see Kali Trolls on that one. And Syndra was, was a problem in that early game. Probably played that really, really well. Just unable to really make it count towards the later stages. This one getting a little bit more thought though on the side of teammate. Of course, now they are blue side. Do have that first pick potential. And they may be looking to use it. They ban out the Ziggs, which is a smart move. So this is an Orianna or a Tristana, because we have said that they can take it mid or bottom on the side of Team 8. Yep. And you don't want to let through a late game hyper carry on a team that already team fights that well. We saw that once they got to the mid game and they all had two or three items, they were just so coordinated in their team fights yep. that there's no opportunity to dive their carries. And Maokai's been taken off the board, Tristana looking at for first pick. Yeah, and getting that away from Robert X Lee is exactly what you need to do. That being said, this has left up that Orianna. So Prolly will be able to take that one. And of course, we all know that Prolly plays a lot of Orianna. That's one of his main champions. And Ziggs, not on the board. So we'll see what they do decide to do. Kha'Zix is also still available. And Nami's there as well. So taking that away from Dodo. Yeah, and playing a team fight that has a lot of speed ups and augmentations for the AD. So maybe looking to put even yep. more on emphasis on the bottom lane, get Robert in a position where once again, he's ahead by the 2030 CS, but then be able to push this advantage this time. And that's why they've taken away a lot of the tanky champions as well as a split pusher in Italy. That's exactly right. Do you think that they might look to go for potentially that Cogmore, even though Robert X Lee hasn't necessarily played it in the LCS? I think they will go back to the Lucian just because he can position himself around the map and you don't want to be able to be dove on by Porpoise Pops as well as uh, Kali Trolls because they're yeah, just so good at controlling the carry. So look for something that's a little bit more mobile, maybe even a Corky because of how dominant his laning phase is. Really push that advantage home. But as I said, it would be between Corky as well as Lucian for me. Yep, Kez going to be back on that Lee Sin. Very good vision game that he played last time. Robert X Lee still thinking about this Lucian pick. Barbadop going to be switching over to the Nami here instead of the Thresh that he played fantastically last game. Got himself caught out a couple of times, but those death sentences were really, really on point. So we'll see whether Dodo can do the same thing. And Complexity can run the same control-focused early mid-game that they did with an Orianna. Oh, it's happened! He's gone for Cogmore. So this is going to be the first time we've seen an LCS Cogmore coming out of Robert X Lee. And they've had a month off, of course. We haven't seen Complexity for quite a long time. And of course, Robert X Lee is an 80 carry player. He would have played Cogmore. It's just not one of his favorite champions. We'll see what he does do against that one, of course. Oh, Gragas, which was the first band to come out of Complexity as well. Nara is going to be looked at as well. This is going to be Kali Troll's pickup. The Poppy is available. Oh my goodness. This, the flashbacks. This is a blind pick top lane. So whatever he takes here needs to be a champion that is versatile. So I'm not looking for a pocket pick necessarily in this top lane. Although if anyone would pull one out, it would be Kali Trolls. That's definitely true. He's hovering the Fizz, but I think it's just to remind us 
how fantastically he did do on that champion. And it's going to be the lock-in of the Gragas here, so... See what he's going to be uh, answered with here in the top lane. Yeah, we saw Gragas fall out of favor when he did receive those nerfs, and of course he was just outclassed by Alistair Malka. and Maokai. Yeah. However, we saw him come back in the LPL as those characters started getting banned, and the most important thing is he still has that displacement. And people like Kelly Trolls that play uh, Gragas so well can knock away two or three members and bring one member into their team, and then with the flay, with the hook, they're just going to have so much control over these team fights. And it's also important at this stage to point out that that is a mid Tristana, and they are running a double AP comp. <laughs> double AD comp, yeah. Double AD comp. And we just got so distracted by the cycling of poppies and fizzes that we just completed. And it's, oh, oh my. no. Oh, dear. Crikey. Crikey. Um, I think we owed that to everyone. As we see that Renekton has been picked up, so Westrice going for a lane bully early to match yeah. the sustain. That and this is one of his out. most played champions as well. Of course, Renekton fell out of favor, but still one of the champions that Westrice feels very, very comfortable on. We'll see whether he does make it work. Now, probably against Slushy here. We'll see. This is n probably not going to be that AP Tristana. It's going to be more like the Voy Boy approach here, where you just go that double AD, make sure that you get this Tristana scaling as much as possible. And we did warn everyone that Slushy has been playing this one a little bit. So, see whether they do manage to make it work. And Maple Street on the corky yet again. Yeah, so going for these mid-game oriented carries, he wants to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in his lane, yeah. not give it up, uh, give his lane away for free. However, we saw that even with an early mid-game champion, he still fell behind in the champion uh, in the early part of the game. So, hopefully with a Thresh on his team this yeah. time, we'll be able to uh, do a little bit better, look for those picks, look for some early game bursts to try and upset the bottom lane of complexity. Yeah, and we'll see how the jungle matchup does go this time as well. Of course, exactly the same champions coming out of these guys. Just a little bit of a switch up on which side of the map they're going to be on. And uh, we shall see whether Kez can make it work this time. Of course, went for a very early side stone, so lacked a little bit of that damage and uh, I guess clear of his jungle as well because he didn't even get that spirit stone. Well, they played a very objective-focused game. Yeah. They didn't want to fight. They wanted to kite around the map and pick up objectives for free. And a lot of that did come from Kez. What that meant, however, was that he was just in a weaker state. All game from Pauper's Pops. As we are about to jump onto the rift and just could not duel and couldn't utilize Lee Sin's kit to its fullest potential because he was just getting blown up every time he tried to dive in. That's exactly right. But we are, of course, into game two between Team 8 and Complexity. Team 8 now on our blue side, Complexity on our red side, and Westrice on the Renekton. See whether he can get that early lane dominance that Renekton's known for. Of course, level three, one of the most powerful level threes in the game. But Kelly Trolls. Welcome very, very good player Rift. himself. And this was our featured matchup, and we'll see how it goes. Oh, that being said, Dodo spotted out four members of Complexity, probably lagging behind just a little bit. So nice wards going out on the side of Teammate, completely scouting that invade. And it looks like they're just looking for some deep wards and potentially a ward to spot the lane swap. So maybe Complexity looking to change this up, put even more focus on the top laner in Kelly Trolls and try and force a lane swap in this game too. Yep, or they're making sure that Westeros doesn't get lane swapped on because of his early game power. We shall see what does happen. Everyone going to be heading back, potentially. Robert X Lee just going to hang out. Skeleton Cogmore, of course Jurassic Cogmore being picked up there. And both buffs on the side of Complexity have been warded. It does look like they are keeping two people in the bottom lane, although Bobadup going back, so Minions have spawned. Maybe even a solo lane in the bottom lane. No, they're both staying now. Lots of pings going out into that bottom side of the map. Now, finally, we do have some of those trinket wards wearing thin, but so far, not too much action. We're just going to have the bottom lane in the bottom lane, top lane in the top lane. And waiting for the ward to expire before they walk to lane, so it will be standard lanes as we get in here. Blue buff starts for both junglers, so opposite sides of the map, four level three, and looks like we're going back standard. Yeah, and we'll see whether this combination of Kez and Westrice in this top lane will be able to get a kill on um, Kelly Trolls early. Do you think that's going to be really, really important, getting this Renekton snowball? Yeah, it would be definitely helpful if they could get him ahead to put some emphasis on that top lane. However, I think that I agree that they just need to try and push bottom lane as fast as possible, get this Cogmore massive, 
Because if you look at the composition, wow, as a lot of damage goes out level 1. Oh, and that Flay augmenting the auto attack there of Dodo. Really doing a lot of chunking. We've got a Rubber X Lee, but Bubba Dub does have that ebb and flow. Yeah. And, yeah. So if they get the bottom lane ahead, Cogmore is in a position this game with the Orianna Ball as well as Nami to dish out so much damage in a late game. Picking up that Trinity Force, I assume first, will give him enough movement speed to be able to kite backwards. And with the Gragas this time instead of the Maokai, may be able to live through these team fights. Yeah, we have it confirmed that Robert X Lee hasn't played one game of uh, Pokemon in the Summer Split, so... Interesting, interesting work. Slushy now going to take a attack dissonance combo to the face, probably going to try and protect himself from the auto attacks. They're going to go back to whacking on creeps. And uh, do you think that there's going to be any time when Tristana has kill potential here on this Orianna? Yeah, definitely. As soon as level 6 is hit, Tristana does a surprisingly amount of uh, magic damage and is able to duel a lot of mid laners, particularly with the auto attack harass that does come out. Looks like Kez is going for an early gank, but spotted straight away by a ward. Yep, yeah, just going to hit it in the head because he's a bit angry at it. But 59% of you do think that Team 8 are going to be able to take this one, so it's one around just a little bit. Slushy taking the attack dissonance combo, not as well as he would have liked, but managing to an explosive shot onto Proly's head as well. Yeah, and the shield coming out of Proly, blocking so much damage. Slushy playing that smart, waiting for... Sorry, Proly playing that smart, waiting for the uh, debuff to be off before he pops his potion. He's back up to full health here. However, he has used both, so both mid laners, no consumable. Wow, and more action in the bottom lane. Yeah, the bubble actually landing on a Maple Street, but Robert X Lee going down very, very low. Has to be careful because, of course, um, Pokemon doesn't have a lot of mobility. And so far, teammate with a lot of pressure. Nice double phosphorus bomb as well here in this bottom lane. And it's going very differently now that we have this late game focused AD carry out of complexity. Yeah, and you can see that Maple Street is able to bully. He's got a 6 CS advantage, so completely turning this lane around. Dodo looks great, and another Phosphorus Bomb misses this time, just on the Did that miss, or was it Ebb and Flow coming in at exactly the same time that it came down? Oh, Descends lands onto Robert X Lee here. He goes right in, gets the play as well. There's the Ignite coming down. We'll see whether it's enough. The Ebb and Flow did manage to bounce onto Robert, but the pressure is definitely on here in the bottom. And both summoners down on the side of the AD carry from Complexity, so even more pressure in this bottom lane now, and that's a complete 180 from where we were seeing it last uh, game. Maybe get Kez down there and help out in that bottom lane. He's been sitting top, but not much is coming of it yet. That's exactly right. Now 22 to 36, 36 in that bottom lane. It was so much of a deficit, I couldn't even say it. And forcing Robert X Lee to go back to base as well. So wanted to finish off that phage early on. Have a little bit more health there. Pops Pops hanging around in this mid lane. Just level four and probably happy to wander up to him. But this bottom lane is exactly where the focus has been. And it's going to be scary for Complexity because that was definitely a linchpin in their early game success last time. Yeah, and great move from the jungler there. Pushing out the lane to get a free back before level six just because of the surprising amount of burst that comes out of Orianna. Rocket Jump, of course, has that wind up, so if you get a nice shockwave in there, it can pull Trist out of mid rocket jump yep. with the ignite. Definitely kill potential there. So Porpoise Pops leashing some experience at the same time. That gets him ahead. So good trade off as a jungler, but allowing a free back to come through on the side of Slushy. He picks and, uh, up the Avarice Blade first item. Yeah, interesting. Not giving him too many attacking stats here in the mid lane. So he wanted to play it pretty passively, I guess. Yeah, just looking to farm up with the double AD. We can see that the back was stopped on the side of Proly as well. And Robert's been caught again. He oh, has no summoners. that is so much damage coming down to Robert X Lee. There's a nice Valkyrie trying to get the extra damage, but Evanflow going to help keep Robert X Lee up. And Dodo taking a lot of auto attacks in response. There were a lot of creeps there, which I feel like was really the downfall of teammates' attack there, because it just looked like Robert was going to die. So in the end, a lot of damage traded and pretty much equalizing in the end, although it was on the side of the AD carry and complexity, so teammate will be happy with that. Porpoise Pop in this bottom lane looking to get a successful gank on there. All the flash, flash play is going to come through. Porpoise Pop's flashing as well. There's the leap. Robert's going to be dead. That is going to be first blood over to Porpoise Pops, getting their Kha'Zix going. Kathy and Surprise not going to be enough either. And a complete turnaround on this map. In the top lane, West Rice having a great game. He's up 15 CS, has a back, and he's going to be able to pick up his first buy and potentially catch that wave. And in the bottom lane, a 20 CS at 7 minutes, and Robert's just being picked on by this Corky. 
really is. 20 to 31 to 51 as well. That is just such a percentage difference as well. As Crowley does pick up his blue buff. He's going to have a lot more mana here in this mid lane. And our Spirit Stone has been picked up first here by Kez. So not wanting to necessarily play this vision game quite as much. Wanting to try and get a little bit more of that attacking statistics. So do you think that Complexity are going to more focus on trying to win these team fights this game? Or is it going to still be... Trying to get the picks, trying to get the, the strength and dominance. The advantage for Complexity is the weakness they have in the bottom lane is completely mirrored in the mid lane for Team 8. At this point, Tristana, only with the Avarice Blade, isn't going to be lending much to the team fight apart from the Displacement Ultimate. And West Rice is having a good top lane experience. He's up nearly 20 CS. However, with how far Robert's falling behind and the power that comes out of Corky, unless they land a good Shockwave, this could quickly go in the favor of Team 8 once again. Yeah, but as you can see, it's only 200 gold the difference. Nice dissonance going to catch Slushy. Slushy right on the edge. And I think that Cali Trolls just doesn't really mind that he's a little bit behind in the farm here in the top lane because he just knows that he has to wait. He's going to have so much more utility and usefulness in the later ends of the game in comparison to this Renek. And that could be something to do with it. Oh my goodness. The damage that's coming out of Proly is so scary at this point in the game. And we see that once again, in the bottom lane, Porpoise Pops waiting for another gang. He's evolved the wings. So yeah, we've been seeing a bit a, of a mix up. Yeah, a bit of a mix up. Maybe recognizing that the dragon fight is a little bit further away this game. And once again, we see Kali cheating towards the mid lane, recognizing that he's at a farm disadvantage in the top lane. So looking to make some action around the map. Yep. Just getting a pink board there in that little brush beneath Baron, but Complexity now with defensive wards along the river. They know exactly that the dragon is still there, as Kez has found this pink ward. Westro's hanging around just so that he can protect it. So far, nothing going to be going on. 200 gold is the difference. And Porpoise still. Pop's been spotted in the river, so not much will come of his mo movements at the moment. Great vision control once again from Complexity in this early game. Even though they're the kill behind, purely by farm, they're actually equal. And wow! Oh, immediately getting the flash out of that shockwave as well. Not sure why Slushy came in there. Of course, Porpoise Pops was available. But yeah, definitely wasn't in vision range at that point. And with the Kha'Zix coming through, wanted to get the slowdown to make something happen. And the damage coming out of Proly at the moment is just bullying around Slushy. And 30 CS the difference. There's some nice CS and comes through from Proly. Yeah, pretty nice 30 CS. And it's, and it's going to mean that... I think that Slushy might need to rethink the fact that Dill's an Avarice Blade first up, because it just gave him no attacking stats in any of these trades. Yeah, maybe that's all he had the gold for. He is going for Static Shift to try and get rid of some of the mid-game lag that we see does come out of Tristana. And it looks like they are setting up for a potential Dragon in the next couple of minutes. Look at the ward control on the side of mid. For Complexity, they know every single time Porpoise Pops is coming near it. And with 40 CS, that's the lane they're looking to win. Oh, Robert actually walks out of the way of that death set and Sackle Prison not quite going to land. Robert up trying to get that one down. And uh, do you think they've got deep wards around the blue buff here on the side of Complexity? So they're going to know when this third one's going to be coming through, when it might be handed over here to Slushy. Do you think that's going to give them the opportunity right, to protect it? Maple Street gets hit by this bubble and. Living Artillery going to come down on top of his head as well. Now, finally, Robert X Lee able to answer back and look, this Phage, or the beginnings of said Phage, giving him a bit of tankiness here in this bottom lane as well. Yeah, level 6 just means you can trade with Cogmore so much easier with the uh, Living yep. Artillery coming out. As we see, some wards being cleared out by the junglers. Oh, Porpoise Pops going to be deterred from taking away that pink ward. going to come back and get rid of it. Living Artillery, no, I'll, I'll just take it. And as we keep saying, it's a map turned on its head. Maple Street, 30 CS ahead. And in the top lane, West Rice seems to be completely unperturbed. I actually think that he can go pretty much full armor after this. Yep. And actually still cause some trouble on the side of Team 8. If he does pick up that Thorn Mail, of course, with double A, uh, AD, it will be hard to deal with him. Although, Maple will do some damage as the barrel hits and Kelly trolls, keeping his sense of humor about him. Yeah, Westrice doing a nice little pirouette as he comes out of there as well. I mean, Kelly trolls that he's still pretty. And bottom lane, yep, definitely in control of teammate. They're just going to freely farm this one. Robert X lead forced to wait until his support gets back. All the way up hits the turret. 
Corpus Pops wanting to make a play here in the mid lane. Kez is there. It's a decent dissonance to make sure. Oh, and Command Attack. That is doing a lot of damage now as well, of course. Maxing them both at the same time so that he has equal amounts of extra burst from both of those abilities. And we can see they're really starting to get nervous about Proly. They've brought Kali Trolls down once again to cheat completely towards this lane. They are looking to kill him because, quite frankly, 40 CS on an Orianna that we saw can control team fight so well. Oh yeah. At some point, they need to be able to force some action onto her because at this rate, he's farming at 10 CS a minute, not t cheating off or taking uh, any of the races at the moment. So he's just having a great controlled game in the mid lane. Certainly is. He's probably going to be able to pick up that Athens on Holy Grail fairly shortly. Of course, didn't really need to. Oh, Slushy actually. There's the shockwave. There's the ignite as well. Going to completely cancel out that heal. And fantastic 1v1 kill. And Slushy is probably in the shop then. And this could be the dragon that they're looking for. It is 13 minutes in. Both teleports are up. So they're. Proly's pretty much full health. After this wave, they can just walk straight down there. They've got good vision control of the area. Nothing on the side of our teammate, but no, just looking to continue to stay in lane, not wanting to give them a team fight. They recognize how good at team fighting they are, so trying to keep them in lane for as long as possible, make up the CS def uh, deficit on the side of bottom lane, and continue to bully around Slushy in this mid lane. But do you think that team fight prowess was a lot to do with the fact that they had this Orianna in the mid lane on the side of Slushy? I just think Team A do a fantastic team fighting team. <laughs> uh, honestly, I think they could team fight with any champions. I think a lot of it was to do with their champion. Yep. Uh, they had Maokai and they had Orianna that just made it so easy to be able to go in and get their damage in the correct place. But all of their game, when they win, their team fights are just on point. Yep. All right, Death Sentence not going to land. Nice use of passive with Nami. In order to get the speed up. Maple Street still just happy to farm. Happy to farm. And that lead is extending ever further, just over 40 CS. Now Kali Trolls has spotted out Kez here. This brush going to hit him with a barrel. And the top lane has kind of equalized here. It stayed at a 20 CS uh, advantage. It looks like West Rise is looking to pick up potentially a Ranguin or a Sunfire. And this has been spotted. This is dangerous on the side of uh, yeah, teammate. Pops already Pops down very so low, low, but... Complexity didn't manage to get there in time. Porpoise Pops does have that evolution of his wing and also get out of there, but wow, that I feel like that was a little bit of a misstep by Complexity. Yeah, that was very anticlimactic to say <laughs> yeah. the least, with so much damage going through as Kali Trolls comes face to face with Kez. Yep, stunned to do a fair bit of damage with those barrels as well. Westra is going to trade that dragon for a top lane. Okay, so once again, Complexity are going towards the objective focus game. They're ignoring neutral camps, like Baron, like Dragon, and they're looking to pick up map control through turrets. They'll pick up the mid one off this nearly as well. Probably, of course, having a fantastic game in the mid lane, and they've already picked up mid uh, top turret, and that means they can bring more people to this bottom lane, look to give Robert a bit of a helping hand. Yep, as uh, Maple Street does take a living artillery to the face, and in fact, he is at lower health than Robert, of course, does have the extra sustain of that Nami in that lane. And he is still keeping that lead that uh, Maple Street has at a stagnant point, so that can be said for the bottom lane. And look how sad Slushy is of Proly. As soon as that ball comes out, just pops yep. the rocket jump away. And he has gone for that Sunfire Cape in the top lane, so looking to fully during this mid game even further. Corpus Pops might, might get collapsed Ooh. on here. Ooh, the dissonance going to get him in the air. Kez does miss that Sonic Wave. Ooh, the battle for the big raid. This is the big deal move. But it went to Porpoise Pops via a red buff. Dick. Not bad. Definitely winning that battle. And we can see the amount of pressure that winning mid lane like this puts on the rest of the map, particularly the bottom half. He's 60 CS now, up now, and that means that they can't stay in the bottom lane e even to farm because if there's any rotation through the bottom half of the jungle, which there is superb ward control over, yeah. On the side of Complexity, they're just going to get dove. We saw how potent four-man collapses can be. And um, in fact, probably had one of the highest CSs at 10 minutes out of any mid laner in the North American LCS. So does know how to farm, that man. And he's just continuing looking to stay in his lane and push this advantage. Now at the tier two turrets, calling the mid laner Kez in to give him a hand. 17 minutes in, looking to push a tier two turret. 
see whether they can manage to get that one through, of course. I think the bottom lane might be the focus next. They do have a lot of wards. Red side jungle of Team 8. This probably just continues to farm. And farm. And farm. And Trinity Force has been picked up now from Cogmore, so he's looking much more comfortable in the lane. Tier 2 boots is the difference, and Sork Shoes does add so much damage on Corky, but you can see with the Sheen procs, able to trade back quite successfully now. Yeah, Robert actually needs to try and dodge these skill shots. Oh, he doesn't manage to get out of that one. Tycho's Blessing is on Robert. Not anymore. So, Corky able to keep farming this one up, but not up by quite as much as before. So Robert's still hanging in this game. It's definitely not over for the bot lane of Complexity here, and you can see Complexity now with a slight gold lead. About looking to on. set up another gank in the bottom side of the map. The vision has equalized on the side of these teams in the bottom half of the jungle, so they have pretty much mirrored wards across the area. They know exactly where Slushy is. He's even falling lower on health as well. He's definitely struggling in this mid lane. He's yeah. picking up jungle camps and is still nearly 60 CS behind. Well, that big Wraith almost took him down, so... You can imagine an actual human player could be quite difficult to kill. Poppus Pops has found that new ward. Kez decided not to clear out the pink. They're waiting for a potential dragon that isn't here. No, they're looking to four-man this bottom lane. They recognize with the advantage that Prolly has, they need to force something somewhere. They'll clear out this pink ward, and they're hoping for a contest, but in the end, it looks like they just will disperse. And it looks like a farm fest over the whole map. Very true. Maple Street able to clear out these waves here in the bottom lane as well. So noticing the fact that Prolly and, and Kez were moving down just big rocketed entire wave and there was no dive potential there either. And Westrise looking to pick up a blue buff for himself. Knows all the focus is in the bottom lane at the moment. Prolly's come over to assist with that. So if Kelly Trolls tries to interrupt this, he might be in some trouble. He is looking to double barrel it and picked up by Prolly. Was it? No. no Kelly Trolls Kelly did Trolls get it. Manages to pick it up. That's why they call him that prodigy top laner. And just to steal away blue bus. And all of the caster creeps. A decent maneuver. And I think that our complexity thought that they'd be able to pull it out of the way of that uh, that explosion, but Kelly Trolls was good. Okay, so once again at 20 minutes, completely equal game here. 200 gold the difference, that's nothing. Dragon up in a minute. Vision control does look better on the side of complexity. I that's due to the dominance of their mid laner. However, Porpoise Pops has hit level 11 now. He's got both evolutions. And the poke that can come out of Team 8 leading into a team fight with Kelly Trolls' barrels, as well as the rockets coming out, and that card mix just means that leading into a team fight, they can just wait and stall out and poke and poke and wait for positional advantage before they actually go in. Yeah, that's exactly right. And also, you look at a team comp that has a Renekton and a Lee Sin, you have to think that that late game's not going to quite be as strong as a Gragas and a Kha'Zix, who actually scale fantastically into that late game. Yeah, Gragas brings utility, which is always useful in late game. As we see, just a little bit of a farm fest. Wow. Yeah. Robert, Robert getting chunked. If you had to take in that Phosphorus bomb as well, it would have been lot of extra damage. Look at these rockets. Now that Maple Street has hit that level 11 mark, has that extra point in his ultimate, it's just doing so much damage. Yeah, and Kez and Porpoise Pops mirroring themselves, or, uh, mirroring each other around the map, sorry. As we see, trying to get positional advantage around this dragon. And another chain vest picked up by Westrise. He's just looking to get as tanky as possible against this double AD. Composition coming out of teammate. Yep. Full mega tank mode engaged by this Renekton. Looks like Kez is trying to pick up that Ninja Tabi next item. And Haunting Guy's being picked up and Distortion Boots on Prolly. Yeah, so looking for that mid-game power spike. He recognizes that he's the one ahead and he needs to make something of this mid-game. Gang coming through from Kelly Troll as he's picked up his Lich Bane now as well as we take stock of some more of the items coming through. And Ooh, wow. Kez flashed out of by Robert Exley. That would have been his death, his death right there. And that's why walking towards a wall is so dangerous when you have a Thresh on the other team. And we see Teammate once again looking to continue their dominance of these neutral objectives. And once again, Westrise still in the uh, top lane looking to push a turret. 
He's not in there whatsoever, or there, there are some wards around. He might be looking for the TP. There it is. Yeah, there's the teleport coming through. Nice Dark Passage. He's going to stop this one. Oh, they managed to steal away the dragon there. Plopper's Pop now in an awkward position, but Westrice is in the middle of the fight. Dominus is active, and it looks like Complexity, they're going to be able to disengage from this one. Yeah, they're content with the dragon. That does give them a 1,000 gold lead, and the flay that came out of Dodo there absolutely saved teammate. If he, Westrice with the ball on top of him, had have got into the middle of those four players, yep. the shockwave would have been, that would have been the fight right there. But a great play coming out will lead to a turret push in the bottom lane. This will go down, so trading a dragon for a turret, overall the game's back to even. Yep, almost exactly. Oh, but that's a really nice Aqua Prison under Dodo. The slice and dice comes through from Westrice. He wants to come in and pick up some of these kills, the double ADs trying to get the heck out, and they've turned it around. Team 8 now really want this fight. Oh, Kali Troll is actually getting soloed out by Broly. Manages to get the ultimate, but he dies in the end. Broly's Oriana is so impressive. What a play from the mid laner on Complexity. Leaves him to push this turret as well with the Clockwork lineup. That's going to take so much damage. Oh, there's playing. a death sentence onto Westrise. They make the play. Team 8, although their health bars are low, do manage to get the work done. There's the ultimate nice Aqua Prison again but from Barbada. No. Oh, Robert X Lee. You're dead, mate. Oh, it waits a little bit just for a bit of the um, stangle. Stangling his life so in front of the Akathian surprise. If we take recap, that's one for two, but a turret going in the favor of Complexity after the turret was traded for the Dragon. So yep. still slightly in their favor as we see the solo out here. So Kelly Trolls just gets chunked a little bit low. Oh, goes for the teleport and gets Shockwave. Oh, and Shockwaves him out of the headbutt as well. And then the flash in to finish off with that Ignite. Kelly Trolls throws a barrel at him in anger. <laughs> uh, well played by Proly. So far been playing a little bit of one player League of Legends at this stage. So his team at the moment is completely on his back. 2-0-0, zero and zero, 60 CS lead at 250 CS for his team. Looking to defend his mid turret, but that will fall down now and ooh, death sentence just missing. Very, very close. That has evened up the gold almost exactly. This is almost the outer ring of turrets, of course. Three turrets now. Complexity. But look at that, there's the ultimate coming through from Kali Trolls. Not really getting much out of this one. Inner turret is going to go down. There's the tidal wave coming through as well. Kez does land the kick, trying to get rid of it. X please some safety up. as well. Westry is coming through. Dominus is there, but look at how much slow is available from that box. Westry is getting kited around this fight. Kali Trolls now walking up very far. But that's just going to be the inner turret, and nothing's going to come for it from Complexity. Yeah, and wasting Westerice's ultimate once again. He's finding it difficult to get into the middle of this team because of the Thresh yeah. box, because of the Thray, the uh, Flay, the Body Slam, as well as the ultimate. There's just so much Kai potential coming out. And then he's just constantly being attacked by both AD carries. Proly, while we are talking about him, had a 2,000 gold advantage. Oh my God. Over the mid lane. So even though it looks like it's an equal map with only about 700 gold the difference, the complete lineup of Team 8 is much richer, with the exception of Proly versus Slushy. Yeah, of course, but Slushy almost has that Infinity Edge. That two-item spike is going to be coming through fairly shortly, and that's going to be on the same. It's going to be the same for Maple Street as well. So both of these AD carries are going to be hitting that spike very soon. Do you think that could mean that the next team fight coming through from Team 8 could be, especially over a consistent amount of time, be in favor of Team 8? Well, from what I've seen on Complexity, they're only going to fight if they get a good shockwave. Yeah, otherwise they're completely happy to disengage, give up objectives, they're not contesting dragons, so... Yeah, these two AD carries will continue to scale, they're both very close to their Infinity Edge. Yep. However, unless Complexity get the engage they want, I don't think that they're just going to head uh, 5v5 fight them. See whether that does work. They do want to be able to pick up as many of these turrets as possible, so they have to start getting these lanes pushing. Probably just going to back here. I think that that lane was actually pushing in favor of teammate. We shall see. It's actually going to clear out that wave. So Maple Street going to head back here. Oh, no. <laughs> so Maple Street being extremely careful, knowing that the mid laner is missing and just <laughs> fires one rocket. <laughs> oh, he's just backing and not backing. And buddy, just make up your mind. So, wasting a lot of time in this bottom lane. He is level 16. He does have that level 3 shockwave now. So, 
if there is a time with complexity to look for a fight, I feel like now is that time. Yeah, I'm just going to be starting up the split push. He's now made sure that there's no corkies in his lane. He's more than happy to come out of hiding in that brush. We do have the Blade of the Ruin King being finished up here by Robert Exley, so this Cogmore starting to scale fantastically into this game. With that Tycho's Blessing and all of those things, he's going to be a massive force to deal with, so you can think that a lot of the late game prowess is going to be resting on Proly and Robert Exley. Yeah, so the top laners will eventually start to peter out, although Kali is going for a fully aggressive build with the Lich Bane. He's going to build it into a Zonya, so jump into the middle of the team, cause disruption, be able to Zonyas and make himself invulnerable. So that's kind of their pseudo tank. Yep. However, West Rice is just so much beefier at this point of the game. He's going to be able to jump onto the back line, disrupt them. Now that he's finished the Randuans, maybe he can even get in to the yeah, fight. Yeah, exactly. Um, However, there are still all the buster shots, the rocket jump to get away from him as well. So he's going to find it continually difficult. And it looks like for once, Complexity are setting up to contest the dragon. Let's see whether it does work out, of course. Rabbiton's death cap was just completed by Proly, so he has a big spike in damage here. That extra 30% ability power, plus, of course, the double penetration from the uh, Haunting Guys and the Sorcerer's Shoes. And the poke coming out of... Wow. Oh, speaking of poke, Kelly Trolls takes half his health. Yeah, but the poke coming out of Corky at this point in the game, as well as Porpoise Pops, who's 2-0-1, is just causing a lot of confusion and difficulty to engage. You see the slow coming across already. Robert using his ult to try and get vision, and they have started up the dragon. Yeah, it's very tentative, though. Ball. Middle of everyone, inching towards Team 8. Complexity do drop aggro on the dragon, and this is the, the face-off. See who's going to make the first move here. Maple Street does have a few rockets charged. And it looks like West Rice once again is heading around, looking for a potential flank, but the vision control out of Team 8 is very good for this fight. Able to clear out the wards, and they have complete vision of the left side of the dragon pit, and Kez might be a little bit caught here. Gonna save guard up to that ward. Oh, nice barrel gonna hit both Robert Exley and Kez. And Kali trolls just back to pick up his Zonyas. That means in this fight, if they dive on top of him, he can just go into stasis and be invulnerable, because that's what stasis is. <laughs> However, it does look like they've started up the dragon, and once again, this oh, will be completely nice uncontested. Box as well, and coming through from Dodo. And oh my goodness, the explosive guy's gonna come through, but not gonna do too much. Just gonna disengage from this one, and so much zoning. Kez actually going aggressive here. Nice play. Not going to stop the safeguard. Oh, Robert X Lee forces the flash. Oh my goodness, that burst from Maple Street. He has to try and get away from West Rice. He's flashed on top of his head. That's 80 carries traded, but Bubba Dub's going to go down as well. Cali Trolls is up on this ledge. Buster shot on West Rice just to make sure that gigantic crocodile doesn't come straight onto his face. And they're on the wrong side of the map, so Proly's trying to corral them here. Dodo, Dodo still might be a little bit low. Oh, Ooh. that Sonic wave, very close. And now it looks like they have turned onto West Rice. Yeah, West Rice has found his way up here. Dice is available, but it's getting very dangerous. Kez could get bursted down by Cali Trolls almost in instantly. Yeah, they need to wait for Proly to come here. And it is still a four on three, but Proly is just so healthy. It looks like they are looking to disengage. Well, there's the dissonance damage. Cali Trolls does want to try and get out of here, but of course the Dark Passage is on cooldown. He's just going to walk through. That Lich Bane extra movement speed is ridiculous. And well fought once again to Team 8. Pick up the Dragon. Win the kill trade as well. They're just playing team fights flawlessly. It's ridiculously, ridiculously well done. Team 8 now with over a 2,000 gold lead. 2.4k. And they're just finding these leads out of nowhere. Ooh, as Slushy a little bit caught. Able to pick up his red buff. It will look like the bottom turret will finally fall yep. on the side of complexity. So able to pick up an objective back. And this game is still so equal at 32 minutes. Maybe 2,000 gold will separate the teams. Exactly right, but of course these Infinity Edges being finished up. Pickaxe now is going to be turned into a Last Whisper fairly soon as we do have the replay from that last fight. Okay, so they've just done the Dragon and uh, Dodo used his ultimate to zone it and over the wall Robert's getting so many free hits but he flashes into the hook. Yet and another man like Yeah, everyone. but the important bit here is that the uh, both AD carries get tied up by that uh, ultimate from Proly. Otherwise, this team fight would have gone even worse. And 
now the teams are kind of on the wrong sides of the map, and you're seeing the problem with Renekton. He's just so easily kiteable. Yep. And from that, they're just able to walk out of the fight. We'll see where the pro uh, complexity, rather, are going to be able to rally from this one. But 2,500 gold, teammate, when this is the stage of the game when they really excel. And that's exactly what we were seeing in the last matchup, too. Yeah, and now they do have their big items rolling through. Blade of the Ruined King has been picked up on the side of Robert. He's 0, 3, and 0, however, has 260 farms, so slowly catching back up. Just not having the game that he would like to have on Cogmore because so much lies on him. Because as we keep hitting on, double AD with the Infinity Edges, as soon as they pick up their last Whisper, yep. they're going to start doing so much damage. And when you win a team fight with two AD carries, they just push structures so quickly. Exactly right, especially considering the fact that both of these champions are fantastic at doing that as well. So Corky with the Sheen procs and of course Tristana with that gigantic range that's not going to be a lot that Complexity can do. And there's a Lich Bane on the side of Kali Trolls. Yeah, but as he gets more AP, he's going to be able to deal with structures quite well. And it looks like they're setting up for another pick. Kali Trolls kind of roaming forward. Nice. Bit of poke coming through from Prolly. They're finding themselves a little bit split up here. Complexity might be in a bit of trouble. Probably wants to try and get that ball in the right spot. The balls and barrels zoning everyone out of everything. And it looks like vision control is being contested quite heavily around this Baron area, jostling for that. Both teams know that they can do Baron remarkably quickly. Of course, with the percentage damage coming out of Kha'Zix and the two AD carries, that's just going to fall extremely quickly. Not to mention Kali Troll's building a lot of damage as well in this top lane. Porpoise Pops. He's split pushing this top out of turret. All right, and it looks like Complexity is completely sick of dancing around the area. They've just rushed down mid lane. They're hoping Robert's range can get them a turret. The wave clear is all on Maple Street here. He's got a fair bit of it as well. Slushy is around. Tristana, no stranger to wave clear as well. And oh, there's the explosive cast breaking up the entirety of Complexity. They do manage to punch back up the flash coming through from Kelly Trolls. There's a nice dark passage and Aqua Prison not going to find his mark, but West Rice, he's found his way in there. The disengage has come through as well. Kelly Trolls dodging everything and West Rice now the focus. Is he going to go down? Of course, these Eddie Carries trying to do the work. There's the Zonny's Hourglass. Oh, a two-man shockwave actually doing so wow. much damage. Robert Exley finally getting in and getting the damage down that he needed to. Dodo cops a living artillery as well. Maple Street now in trouble. Complexity winning a team fight. Yeah, two for zero. Oh no, Kelly Trolls, did he not fall there? How did he get out? Only one for zero, so a one team fight, but at the start of that fight with the flank from Kelly Trolls, Complexity looked so confused until Kelly Trolls actually presented a target in the yep. middle of the fight to focus on. Once again, quite a well fought team fight from Team 8, as you consider that they started the fight four versus five yeah. for the majority of that, but too much damage coming out of uh, Probably at this stage. As you can see, another great flank from Kelly Trolls. Gets the ultimate, tries to split up the team. However, the split focus that comes out of complexity is what really hurts them. Kez gets chunked down low. West Rice is trying to zone. Probably's trying to deal with Kelly Trolls. And it's until this point where Kelly Trolls thinks he has an opening onto Robert X Lee. And now finally they all realize that they're grouped up. A nice two-man shockwave. And the dissonance, the dissonance that comes out afterwards just does so much damage. And Kelly Trolls survives on absolutely no health. Yeah, a bit of a tussle What's going on there, but teammate just going to be able to take this dragon yet again. They have had so much control. This time it will be contested. They're coming in. Yeah, trying to come through, of course. Actually, it was just... Uh, it's going to be secured by Pauper Swaps. There's the tidal wave coming through as well. West Rice now trying to get in amongst everything. Does have his thorn mail, so he's pretty tanky, but it's not going to be quite enough. That is going to be... Dodo getting taken down on the other side. Porpus Pops now trying to get a little bit of kite through. Look at this T8 lineup just doing so much poke. As Complexity try and get into this one. They have grouped up though. You have to say that Complexity really do need to try and prey on teammate when they have that shockwave available and try and get them grouped. And right now they actually think that they can win a team fight if teammate come to them. So they're looking to set up around this Baron. They have complete control. Still 15 seconds on the support player from teammate. So if they want to go for this, they need to face check. Teleport is coming through. Yeah, we do have Cal Kelly Trolls in here. Let's have that ult available as well. And everyone trying to get the fight set up in their favor. It seems to me like 
Team 8 do want to move up to the top side of this map. And look at the gigantic wave there in the top lane as well. So that inner turret is under fire. Oh, Kalitros may have been caught out here. There's a nice resonating strike. The flash into the kick going to come through as well. There's the living artillery. Kalitros does have that Zonyas, but I think it's just going to wait a moment before he dies. The dissonance is going to pick up that kill. And that is surely going to mean complexity can take this Baron. We'll see whether it's going to be enough. That is only the top laner down, so they do still have a smite. And they haven't swept out all the wards, so they can see exactly what the health is on Baron at this point. And the oh poke is starting Lord, to come through. Oh, poke. Bubba up so incredibly low at this stage. Slushy picks up the kill. Is this a mistake here from Complexity? Poppers Pops does leap out of the way of this one. Maple Street forced to use that flash at the same time. Complexity turning right around, trying to get this one through. Maple Street so low on health, trying to kite. It's going to be probably picking up the kill, but he'll go down to Slushy. Does slushy has got such high health. West drives right now, trying to get onto his face, but the rocket jumps here. Kez is going to fall. Robert actually, oh, that living artillery so close. Both members of teammate that are alive, flashing red. Westrise as well. Robert wanting to try and get something done, but teammate, get them off the Baron. Robert played that fight so passively in the end. Was nearly half health and just wasn't in a position to do as much damage as what Slushy was. As we see the replay, the crit that came through at the start got this all started. Nami went down without using any abilities. Probably, once again, you can see Westrise. Uh, Robert X Lee, sorry, he just goes up to the top after he gets chunked and he doesn't want anything to do with this fight. Meanwhile, Slushy is just getting so much work done, even with the turnaround right here. Robert just can't get himself into a position where he feel he can, feels he can do damage without getting blown up. Now, in the meantime, top outer turret is going to go down in favor of teammates, so evened out the turrets. Created 4,000 gold lead side of teammate. See whether they can bring this one through. Of course, four items now on Tristana, and that is very, very scary. Somehow, he's managed to caught up, catch up, and then some. Now 30 CS ahead of Prolly. Wow, as Probit unloads on Dodo. Yeah, well, there's the shockwave actually coming down only onto Slushy. He's at full health still, and there's the buster shot. Collie probably does pick up Dodo. Corpus Pop still has the sun. Moving artillery, on. there's the resonating strike. So much range on that one. Does manage to get the Mikhails in order to stop Kez from falling to any shenanigans. Complexity managed to get a pick. Not sure whether they'll be able to translate this one into anything. We'll see whether they do. And this time the jungler is low. So once again, they're looking towards that Baron area, sweeping it out, making sure that teammate have to face check, but they're just streaming down mid lane. They want nothing to do with face checking that area. Yeah, Complexity not really quite discovering what to do. Pops Pops wants to back somewhere. Complexity now trying to collapse. Five against four here, of course. Massive wave in the bottom lane. They're looking to pick up another objective here, and they're just pulling uh, Complexity around the map wherever they want them to go. Yeah, complexity not really knowing what to do. Westrice is trying to flank from the back. There's Tycholus pressing. The flash actually being blown immediately from Kali Trolls. Does manage to get the body slam. Kez goes down so low. Slushy now in the back line has so much range. Dodges out of the way of that Aqua Prison somehow. And he's going to be okay as well. My goodness. Now level 18 on this Tristana. It's so hard to lock her down. And this is a full tank Renekton. And look how quickly he gets shredded by Spooky yep. late game. Just so much damage coming out on the side of teammates mid laner now that he is this fed Tristana. 360 minion kills. The top in the game by a long way now. Actually, Westrice just behind him. But obviously, Renekton not using that gold as efficiently to scale into the late game. That's exactly right. And they both have that, those four items, of course. The four items on Slushy are going to be doing a lot more damage. We did see when he does manage to stand still and just auto-attack people, it's ridiculous. And with that Bloodthirster shield, he doesn't seem to take any damage. He got caught by a Shockwave before. Nothing happened. And he's picked up a Negatron Cloak as well, so going to be even less that probably can do in this fight. Protects him, of course, against the return damage of... Oh, wow. Kali Trolls. That's only two shots. Robert is finally starting to ramp up as well. He's picked up another, uh, a Phantom Dancer to just augment his movability around these team fights as well as the damage he can do, of course. Cogmore doing so much miss damage with that W. Yeah, that last was but not as necessary on this Cogmore. Yeah, I would expect him to just go Infinity Edge after he picks up uh, what should be a QSS. Let's see if he does decide to go for that one. The reason I say QSS over a Banshee's in this uh, game is he's only really in danger of getting caught by a hook. 
Yep. And of course, QSS just breaks the hook, makes it so he can't get engaged on, and that will keep him much safer as he is in the back of these team fights. Yep. Speaking of hooks, we'll make the street. A bit of trouble. There's a tidal wave coming through, actually. Not going to land onto anyone. That's a big cooldown lost here for Complexity. And once again, the phone just seems to be up. completely split on the side of Complexity. Now being pincered around this bar uh, dragon pit. Robert actually now wants to try and do some work on his own. Let's have that command protect from Prolly. Scrying all going to be used. Meanwhile, the dragon has exactly been started up and it's going to be taken. taken just right jumped under into the nose yeah, that's, of complexity. That's so cheeky. Slushy was, of course, just off to the side. And look at the kite and the slows and the poke that comes out of teammate. They're just playing completely in control of their composition. It's very, very cheeky as well because they're staying out of engage range. They don't want to put themselves in a position when they can, where they can be engaged on and shockwaved into a good situation for complexity. And man, they're just doing it so well. They know how to play as a team so effectively. And without an amazing flank from West Rice, maybe from a teleport with those home guards, or a flash bubble, or maybe potentially Kez going in, but I doubt that because he's just going to get blown up straight away by the double AD. Yeah. Um, and kicking someone into the team, there's just no way that they can engage onto this team successfully. Yeah, and it looks like Robert X Lee actually going for a Guardian Angel here, potentially. Or double defensive items. No, he'll be going for GA. Just wanting to give himself that second life. Maybe it gives him the comfort to play a little bit more aggressively in these team fights. Yep. We did see that he played the last one quite passively. And from here, it just looks like Complexity are a little bit confused. They, they can't get the fights they want. They've repetitively tried to set up around this Baron area. Although they do do it extremely quickly, and they have started it up once more. Yeah, Robert X Lee with that bio Arcane Barrage and the Blade of the Rune King. They have a lot of damage on it. Of course, no vision here for teammate. Complexity trying to get it down the land. He's going to show where at least Bubba Dub is. This will go down before they can even get in there. Yeah, that's going to be the Baron actually locked down here for Complexity. The box coming through, just going to cage that Crocodilly for a little while. And Complexity with Sneaky Baron. So finally getting the control around the Baron pit that they've been aiming for for about 15 minutes now. Able to pick that one up for themselves, but what can they do with it? We've already seen how well Teammate disengages. So yeah, I don't exactly. necessarily think Baron is the answer because they just can't get into the team fights that they want. They want a teammate to face check the Baron so they could fight an advantageous fight. However, with the buff, Kelly Trolls is picking a fight with Proly very close to their base. Yeah, he does have the support of his whole team there as well as a massive wave about to crash into this turret. So even against the Baron buff, teammate potentially going to be able to pick up a turret. Yeah, very nicely played. Look at all of that poke. The explosive cast not actually gonna land. Could mean something, but of course not very high cooldown on that particular ultimate. Void stuff now picked up from Kali Trolls as well, so... It's full AP. Gragas in that top lane. Has a blasting one. I could imagine that's probably going to go into either... Probably not on Abyssal Sept. It's probably going to be a red. Yeah. That, that will be a death tap. Oh, it's an Abyssal. You were correct. Oh, wow! Wow. Yeah. Got it. Or a potentially maybe a defensive item, something like. Yeah, it could be just going to Spectre's Cow. Spectre's Cow. Yeah. Shop that item. And they've less Slushy in this bottom lane to try and push. I actually think with the wave clear that comes out of Maple Street at the moment, as well as Kelly Troll, they could afford to leave him there. Although West Rice has recalled, he's gone back to buy. And the Guardian Angel was finished on Robert. This could be a time when they could fight. Of course, having a Guardian Angel does mean that Robert going to be able to play more aggressively, as you mentioned, and also it is a bit of a time where they've got an advantage. Slightly, you know, one and a quarter. Problems. And as we said, the wave clear is coming out so well from Maple Street on the Raffle Copter. <laughs> Just able to sustain the poke out with those missiles. And the flank once again coming in from Kelly Trolls. Nice vision this time on both sides to make sure that they're not collapsed on without knowing. Kelly Trolls just isn't scared of anything. He's going to do the wolves just in full vision of complexity. Hanging out, sees the move over, doesn't really mind. And it looks like it will be a rotation into the bottom lane with the Baron buff to try and pick up the second last outer turret. Although already, teammate are on that side of the map looking to cut them off. Looks like to me that this isn't going to go down without a fight. Of course, Westrice hanging out 
He is going to be able to get there. He's very tanky. Doesn't take very much damage from that boss response bomb at all. Oh, Kali Troll's in a lot of trouble. There's a resonating strike. Does put down the explosive cast. Does get Kess across the wall. He picks up the kill. Crawley secures that one, actually. So now it's a 4v5. It's all on here. Tidal Wave coming through. This is going to be the disengage. Dominus has been popped here. Complexity decide that it's going to be the mid lane that's going to be the focus. So their shot caller on the side of Team 8 is down. Are Complexity going to be able to make the moves in order to get the objectives they need? Full solution force to use a defensive rocket jump. And half, three quarters health on that inhibitor turret. So they should be taken. able to get this one next wave. Look for West Rice to go super aggressive. His ultimate is on cooldown, however. There he is. Slicing and dicing into that back line. The rocket jump comes through after the stun does land. It is going to mean this inhi inhibitor turret does go down. And Robert X Lee trying to get the damage through. We can say definitely is being a little bit more aggressive now that he has that defensive fight. Porpoise, Porpoise, Porpoise on the back the side. Yeah, in the back. Aqua Prison going to stop him from doing any funny business. And that's going to be an inhibitor for complexity. Showing signs of life still and utilizing that Baron buff to great effectiveness. And Kali Trolls on Gragas has been caught trying to flank, ends up getting blown up, and that's cost them the first inhibitor of the game, exactly what Complexity wanted. Now they can rotate around the top and bottom lanes, try and use the teleport from West Rice, and try and get back inside that base. Six items say. will be coming out yeah. very soon for a lot of these champions. Already obtained on the side of Slushy, he has chosen to pick up that Banshee's Veil. Yeah, and it's, it's getting very, very scary because as close to this late game as you get, Complexity just somehow manages to find the answers. Six item Renekton has finished off that Guardian Angel as well, so full tank Renekton, triple armor item, well, quadra armor items, and the Spirit Visage, of course, with that Ninja Tabi as well. Doesn't have a lot of tenacity, so can I, I guess, get uh, locked down a little bit? Might want to get perhaps some Mercury Streads a little bit later on. See what he does decide to do. Black Cleaver has been finished up by Porpoise Pops. Yeah, there's not really that much hard CC on the side, so I do like the Ninja Tabai with two yep. auto attackers on the other team. He's just going to be able to sustain through the damage that much easier. Baron buff is now down, although, as we said, positional advantage to complexity now with that mid wave going to push itself. It's so easy to split push on either side of the map with West Rice. Kelly Trolls isn't there. He's looking for another flank, so top turret may go down uncontested. Yeah, these 280 carries on the side of teammate. Oh, Robert X Lee's been caught up, but that is not the target that you wow. want. Brilliant tidal wave gonna come through as well, though. Look at Prolly's damage. There's the resonating strike. Care's getting taken for a ride. My goodness, the top lane in the turret is gonna go down. Teleport coming through from West West Rice. Maybe a little bit late, but Dodo just got destroyed in that fight. Yeah, and Robert was able to stay alive, although the ultimate comes out trying to pop that Guardian's Angel. And the Shockwave hitting three members, I believe, saved that fight as well as the Tidal Wave coming through from Bubba Dub. Yeah, looked like Robert had got himself in a situation he didn't want, but his team was there, they had his back. It's going to be A-OK. -okay. Of course, his inner turret is now going to be the focus. It's going to be the last inner turret of the game, of course. Super Creeps are smacking on these Nexus turrets at the same time. Teammate cannot afford to defend this. Flexity are going to be able to take the last ring of turrets. and. Looking to try and come back into this one, of course, still with a gold deficit. That is going to be a, a Nexus turret down as well. Complexity almost have the gold lead back. Yeah, and now 30 seconds until Baron, they're going to be able to set up vision control around this. Send the members with low health back to buy once more. Probably picking himself up a blue buff, has that distortion enchantment, wants to make sure he can flash forward as many times to try and oh, yeah. start and engage for his team and they have complete control over the Baron pit. This is so scary for Complexity though, because Team 8, they can destroy these structures so quickly that if they get an ace, that could almost mean the end of the game even from here. At this point, if either team gets an ace with two members up, yep. it will be the end. Well, that's definitely the case on the side of Complexity. There's only one turret that stands between them and the Nexus. But we'll see whether... Teammate can rally themselves back into this one, of course. Bottom and top waves are pushing for complexity. And now we are into the super late game. Baron has been started. Complexity looking to contest. It's very, very low on health, though. Look at the amount of damage from teammate. They are going to be able to take this one. Porpoise Pop secures it. Explosive cast going to stop anything from complexity from coming in. 
And there's the resonating strike right in the middle of the fight, but cares he just gets obliterated. Teammate securing the Baron and getting a kill is not what they wanted. Now with the gold lead definitely in their favor. Proly, what are you doing, buddy? Does have a Guardian Angel as well. That's triple Guardian Angel on the side of Complexity. Bought themselves a few extra lives here. But that's going to mean that this inhibitor is going to respawn and it's going to be te Team 8 in the driving seat. Yeah, and that's why it's so dangerous to engage like that onto the full team. The amount yeah. of damage that can come out of this Team 8 lineup at the moment, the burst potential of Kelly Trolls as well as the consistent damage out of the two AD carries. One... You just can't dive in like that. Even if that was Westrice, he would have nearly got blown up just yeah. as quickly. Yeah, Westrice showing his amazing amount of skill taking down Big Of course, doing a lot of auto attacks. W. Not bad. But now, Complexity well back on the back foot. They do have a massive turret lead, but with this Baron buff swirling around teammate and their ability to create the team fights that they need. Distance. Still doing some work on a pops pops. The Andrews Torment actually being finished. Six item, uh, six item Ariana here. It's going to be very very difficult to deal with. Doesn't have a void staff though, so that's a little bit frightening. Or probably. Yeah, not that much magic resistance coming out on the side of teammates. So electing for flat penetration instead. Most people just sitting out. on one magic resistance item. There is a locket of the Iron Solari there for Dodo though. Solushi actually opting to tank out this out inner turret in the top lane. And with Baron buff and Bloodthirster, you can definitely do that on ADs nowadays. The changes to Bloodthirster have made it more of that defensive item. Able to build that shield up. Kelly Trolls in the full split push mode as well. Gonna meet Westrice here in the bottom lane, but look at this inner turret, that's gonna go down. That is indefensible here from Complexity. Kez gets slowed down, of course. 50% slow on the evolution there. Oh, Pop is getting ripped apart by Robert X Lee. You cannot get too close to that, uh, that skeletal puppy dog. He will shoot you to death. And you can see how tense this game is. Both teams realize that everyone's nearing the six item mark. Even the support's just leaving a space th free for those wards. Now, even Dodo's given that up and they're just looking for the last team fight, the deciding team fight. Even though there's a nearly six, 7,000 gold advantage in the side of Team 8, once everyone's at six items, doesn't matter. that doesn't matter. No, it will to be honest, at this point, when it's 80 or so thousand gold, 5,000 means less and less. Team 8, though, they don't think so. They're going to take a dragon just for funsies. Still looking Show to get Corky. His sixth item. Is that going to be a last Whisper, do you reckon? Or something else? Of course, a lot of mixed damage on the side of Corky. Yeah, so much mixed damage. I think he will get a last Whisper just because of how tanky West Rice is and they want to be able to burn through him as soon as possible. Nothing worse than shooting a Renekton and losing more health than you take off him. And <laughs> yeah, he is Very demoralized. A lot of armor on West Rice. That is definitely true. We do have more of Malmortius just being finished up here by Porpoise Pops. Cali Trolls now. Clearing out this mid lane now. If it has respawned, of course, inside of Team 8. They used their Baron buff. It's still floating around, but it's, it's dwindling, and they haven't really gained all that much. They took the inner turret in the top lane. That's about it. And, of course, a dragon, but not meaning so much. And this game is now in familiar complexity territory. Yeah, Pushing 60 is. minutes. Everyone up to full item builds. Open inhib. They're looking to try and push down, but the flank is coming through once again, this time by Porpoise Pops. He's on the backside. Yeah. And they're just looking for any positional advantage on the map. Now going to cut off the minion wave to ensure the push doesn't go through, and Westrice looking for his way in. Yeah, nice slow from that barrel is going to mean that Westrice can't engage onto Porpoise Pops, who does, of course, have the leap, so he's going to be okay. Probably. And Command Protect is soaking up so much damage now. Is ridiculous. Has sold. I'm not entirely sure what. Oh, you sold his Leandri's Torment and actually picked up Aquoid stuff just for the extra damage there as well. Oh, Porpoise Pops. Got onto Porpoise Pops and he said half health. Yeah, this is a six item Cogmore as well, so this puppy's doing a lot of damage. Not gonna be able to get into this base. Descent isn't gonna land. Kali Trolls now 
does actually engage back on a West Rise without that much magic resist, so he takes a lot of damage there. That Lich Bane Brock doing a lot of work, but oh, look at Robert starting to do so much. Oh my gosh. That was one extra auto attack and he would have been dead. Slushy as well. West Rise now just oh, one hit so on that much. Oh, oh, Robert. Can't manage to make his way through. Robert up trying to get that Aqua Prison Eye in. And unfortunately, the disadvantage of fighting this close to a base is now that the teleports come through, they're all full health and then not the Damn, same. The flash probably actually gets his Guardian Angel pop there as well. The health bars of complexity are very low. Cairns falls down. A shockwave not going to land on anyone. That's a double kill for Maple Street. Robert Exley's being taken down to his death. That was his Guardian Angel, but he's going to die after that one. Team 8 with a fantastic team fight. Dodo, that box placement was fantastic. And Proly. Look at the, the shockwave. Unfortunately, not on cooldown. He tried to get it out, but he died just before it went off. Cali Trolls now picking a fight with West Rise, but look at the combo. He's going to be able to take that one. Slushy in here. Look at the amount of damage and just Bubba Dub alive. Teammate look to be able to saunter into this base. We'll see whether they can tank this one out, of course. Massive death time is here at 58 minutes into the game. Looks to me the turtle shell being popped. Bubba Dub's gonna go down. The ace for Slushy. And in the super late game, Complexity is taken down. Teammate with a fantastic victory. And once again, it was on the back of a teleport in from Cali Oh yeah. Able to get that flank on what was a low health target. Blow up Crowley, who was the most fed member of his team. The play coming out of Team 8 looks impressive. It certainly does, and if Complexity want to make it into this one, it's going to have to be that 3-0 comeback we've seen happen a couple of times now. Yeah, we certainly have, and as we said at the start of this, every single game has been three games in a row. Yeah, every single series, sorry, has been three games in a row, meaning that if Team 8 wins this and get into the LCS, it will once again be a 0-3, and if Complexity is to come back, Oh, It'll be the 3-2. Yeah. So it has to be. It has to be. Well, it doesn't have to be. Well, actually, win no. one game and lose. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true. So it doesn't have to be at all. No. So you've ruined my dreams entirely. Sorry, man. Uh, every time. Every time. And I, I like to think that Rage Blade's a good item. You never let me have that either. It definitely is not. So <laughs> in that game, we saw that they were able to team fight more successfully. Yep. They were able to pick up a Baron. They were able to push into the base. And they the used base. that Baron fantastically. Yeah, able to push inhibitor. into the base. However, the team fight coordination that comes out of Team 8 yep. in these late game and mid game team fights just make them so scary to go up against. You saw that they were split in their decision making. Should we try and attack the flank where Cali Troll is coming from? Do we go for the double ADs and try and land a group shockwave? And in the end, the indecision yeah. just caught them out on the last team fight. They got blown up because it was so late into the game, we're just able to rush down mid. And you saw them just tanking up these inhibitor turrets as well. There was just so much damage that as soon as one team fight was won, even though that was all the way back in teammates' base, basically, that they just pushed all the way up, took an inhibitor turret, nexus turrets, and the game. But that's what happened when, when a game does go to the 60-minute oh, yeah. mark, completely in complexity's territory, but teammate able to pick up a win. Yep, fantastically played by teammate. But for a breakdown of that hard-fought game two win, let's head over to the analysis desk and talk to Dash. Thank you, Atlas and Spawn. Uh, a second win there for Team 8, but I'm going to go ahead and throw this word out there for both teams. Disorganization. I feel like the fights were full of them, and that's why it went back and forth to, and went so late into the game. Yeah, I think a large part of that is the fact that they had this composition that didn't have a front line for Team 8. They're trying to play around that, but that's not exactly their style. Porpoise Pops was on more of a pokey disengage champ. And then on Complexity's side, I just think it was lack of vision control in some parts, and then they kept giving up dragons still. Like, the dragon control was absolutely abysmal. Yeah, they were just constantly bleeding those dragons. They're like, oh, hey, and we just got Baron. Let's let them have dragon for free again. And then they were up 5k gold still, just like off dragons after like they got Baron and they got ahead in team fights. And the only time they made they made plays was when Cali Trolls got caught out for like whatever reason. They were never trying to push up. They were never trying to press their advantage, get those deep boards, 
engage a fight, go for the inhibitor. They were just hoping that teammate made a mistake. And Cali Trolls got caught out a couple times. Things got a little scary for teammate. And then Cali Trolls wasn't really um, getting the good ultis off. He was missing a lot of them. But then at the end, when he got that flash body slam, finally what he needed to do won them the game. So he really turned it around at the end. And there is definitely a lot of sloppiness there. I think it goes back to his TP usage and how I was praising him so highly for it. Because coming in from the right side where there aren't there wasn't any wards. They didn't see that coming. Flash body slam into Prawley to just blow him up. Perfect execution there by Cali Trolls in the final moments. You definitely have to hand it to Cali Trolls as the playmaker of Team 8. So I want to now go back and look at the picks because Complexity had the opportunity this time to counterpick into that Gragas. They chose Renekton. Zion. Is that what you go with against Gragas, or were there other options? Uh, I think he definitely could have went for the Lulu pick. The thing with Gragas is ever since he got nerfed, he has huge mana issues. You saw Cali Trolls, he was constantly at like ze like 10%, zero mana, like the whole lane. And uh, re with Renekton, he was able to go up like 40 farm, and that was great, but he needed to suppress his advantage. You saw him going aggressively for the blue buff. He should have been getting into the jungle, getting those deep wards. He should have been pushing his advantage into mid. As that tanky Renekton, he went full tank items. You can easily dive that mid lane on that Tristana. You don't even have to dive or just pressure the tower because if you're Renekton, you fall off so hard late game. You saw him. He was just kind of like a meat shield, and you need to, you need to kind of just go mid, go bottom, like go for dragons. Look for the objectives with your early game advantage, and he didn't really do that as much as he could have. There was definitely a struggle by both teams to engage. We you already commented, Zyrene, on the fact that teammate their only engagement came from either a good hook or by the the Gragas ultimate, which he was throwing out pretty liberally there. And then on the side of complexity, you have a Renekton who's trying desperately to flank, and there were there were whole minutes at a time where we're watching him try and chase down these uh, slippery AD carries and such. And for that reason, we weren't able to see either team ever get a clean engage in the way that they wanted to. Yeah, I really did like the fact that they had the Kha'Zix paired with the double AD carry because he's just able to poke and set up the Black Cleaver stacks and throw out his W constantly so that people can't actually close that distance. And Renekton, he's just going to walk at you. He needs the slice to get the dice in that extra distance, but West wasn't getting it because the, they're keeping him far you away. You have the Gragas cues on top of that yeah. as well. We do have to jump into the first replay because I feel like this first replay at 37 minutes, 37 and a half minutes into the game, around the Baron Pit, very much illustrates the fact that both teams were making kind of sloppy decisions. The first sloppy decision is on on the side of complexity here to start the Baron. So Zion, I'll let you take this one away. Yeah, so complexity wasn't really like looking for that much this game, but as soon as they got the pick was when they finally decided to try to force something, and then this was a bad scenario because everyone the teammate was closing all around them. They had all that Tristana Corky poke going in. They land the shockwave, but it doesn't really end up mattering because they got the box down and they're kiting out around. Maple Street gets in a pretty good position, but then he oh he just grabs the lantern at such a bad time. And then Ori is able to just get the ball on him, and then he ends up dying. But this is kind of how chaotic it gets. Yeah, and probably actually Flash to cl help close that distance to get the ball right on top of it. And then at this point, Kez is just going too deep. This is one of the first times we saw him go too deep. We see it happen again later on. Much later in the game, more. and that was catastrophic. It's very uncharacteristic of Kez, too, because a lot of complexity contribute or tributes a lot of their late game and their late game shot calling to Kez because he's very level-headed and it's very unlike him to go hard. So it ends up being a three for three at the end of that. And I guess you can say, all right, fine, both teams break even. But again, the, the, the purpose in showing that replay was the fact that both teams, their gameplay in this game particularly was kind of riddled with, with chaos and, and minor mistakes here and there, but it ultimately resulted in a 60-minute game where it comes down to that one fight. And I don't think any team ever wants to leave it up to one fight. Yeah, I, I definitely think that, t I mean, uh, Complex needs to go back to the thing that they were doing the most successfully in the set, which was split pushing. You saw Robert X. Lee on that Lucian. He, he got like five out of their six towers that game, just literally walking up a lane and split pushing it. And teammate didn't really have a good response to that. They were just forcing engages. And since they were far enough ahead and people were out of position, they got the towers, they got the picks. But if Complexity can get that split push started sooner and set up for it, I think they can work off that really well because they're not doing the objective game well at all. They're bleeding dragons. They're bleeding vision control. They're bleeding barons. They need to, they need to look for split push or something that they can do more effectively. 
So as Zion Spartan, the premier split push of the LCS, do you ever give any other advice other than split push all the time? No, that's the only way. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I do want to I want to nitpick on one little thing really quickly is the fact that we saw a completed Leandris on Oriana. I entirely agreed with his decision to pick up the haunting guys for early magic penetration because teammate at that point in the game when he did pick it up hadn't been building magic resist. So he was going to be chunking. But at the time he decided to build the Leandris, we saw Banshee's Veil is across the board. We saw a locket on Thresh. At that point, I would have sold the, the Haunting Guys and gone straight for a Void Staff. I think it would have been far more effective and possibly changed the outcome of a few of the fights. Yeah, he eventually did do that. Probably also did fall behind in CS over Slushy, who he had a big lead over in the mid game, but they didn't push those types of advantages, which was a problem with the Renekton. It was a problem with the lead that they had because their bottom lane was getting shoved in, and that was completely in teammates' favor. Yeah, the itemization was a little bit questionable there on both sides because with the um, they built the Leandries on Orianna and they built the GA on Kogma, and that was really defensive, which is not what they needed. All right, I do want to jump into the final replay because, again, this will illustrate what you have said multiple times is that Cali Trolls is a playmaker, and this was a fabulous TP decision here to engage and end the game. Uh, Zyrene, I'm going to let you handle this one. All right, so Cali Trolls, he's always known for his TP positioning here, but these wards are always set up by his teammates. So he comes in from the side and... Oh, oh drop oh, the beat. Okay. There it is. So he comes up here, uses his body slam flash to close distance, but we're going oh, so to... That play so good. No, we've we got to go back, back It's just too much to handle. You know yeah, that's... Blew no, our that mind. Blew our system. That Gragas play was ridiculous. <laughs> that doesn't mean we can't. Yeah, it doesn't mean we can't talk about it though. Yeah. He did have a fabulous flash body slam engage there, which basically, I mean, I guess like 60% to zeroed uh, because they were all at about 60% health there. But it was that first pop of the GA which forced Complexity to defend at that point. They're like, oh no, one of our members went down. Now we have to fight this. Yeah, and the fact that those AD carries are just pelting away at people while all of that is happening, when you're holding, like, you're trying to hold your ground against AD carries, it's extremely difficult. So you want to close on them or retreat, but they didn't want to give up those extra GA kills. Quickly, Zion, because we need to move on to the next game, I want to I want to get your thoughts on what Complexity does at this point, because as all the series in... Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. I know, I know split push, but I was going to talk more about in Champion Select, because I do realize that they want to go for that split push. So what do they do in Champion Select? to set that split push up exactly they want it, the way they want it, because otherwise it, it spells the end of their LCS careers. I think them having that better bottom lane was huge for them, especially in the first game when they had that Lucian lane and they were pressing their advantage hard. I think they need to go back to having a bully lane bottom because they were bullying Dodo and Maple Street. Go back to that. And then I think they just need to make sure they use that advantage to actually control Dragon, because bot lanes on the bottom side of the map, hey, there's an objective right there. We can control it this time because we got the advantage. And I think if they actually take advantage of the dragon, they will have a good time. But they just need to, they need to realize that dragon's an objective they can take. And when they start getting it, I think they're going to start winning. All right. You heard it from the split push god himself. So we'll see if Complexity decides to employ that very same strategy. We are going to take a short break. But when we return, we'll see if Teammate can take this series in a clean sweep or if Complexity can reset and come out ahead in game three. Stay tuned. <laughs> Not gonna stop the safeguard. Oh, Robin X Lee forces the flash. Oh my goodness, that first from Maple Street. He has to try and get away from West Rise. He's flashed on top of his head. Maple Street so low on health, trying to cut. It's gonna be probably picking up the kill, but he'll go down to Slushy. Does Slushy's got such high health? West Rise now trying to get onto his face, but the rocket jumps here. Kez is gonna fall. Oh, full health, and then not the end of the flash. Probably actually gets his Guardian Angel pop there as well. The health bars of complexity are very low. Kez falls down. A shockwave not gonna land on any. That's a double kill for Maple Street. Robert X Lee's been taken down to his 